Lauren got her lip back this episode. Watch. Not even a disagreement. I said a, a horrible, offensive joke on like day two of the honeymoon. But I like I was called a failure in the marriage. You did tell me that I failed you and I failed the marriage. You did slut shame me for having sex two months before the wedding. You never apologized for the way you made me feel. You just cried about how it made you feel bad that you made me feel bad. Well, I did oh. that night. You did not even apologize for t calling me a failure and that I felt in this marriage and for not having your back. So I don't sit here and say you've apologized for those words unless you really felt them. And if you didn't really feel them, that hurts even more for you to say that I failed this marriage and I failed you when all I've been doing is assuring you that you haven't failed. Well, I don't think you have failed. Then why would you say that? Like, there, <laughs> I'm not changing what I'm saying. But you literally do change what you say, all right? You change it every moment. Uh, if that's your truth, that's your truth. But, I mean, You're I such a gaslighter, bro. No. And I'm about to bring that up. You are such a gaslighter. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and let you say otherwise because you know it's the truth. It's the truth. But it's I have been accountable for my actions this entire time. And if you're not going to hold yourself accountable, I will. Hey, y'all. It's your captain for all things creative coming at you with Married at First Sight, Denver, Season 17, Episode 10. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Please be sure to like, subscribe, all the things that will help the channel get into the YouTube algorithm even more. And if you're returning, thank you so, so much for rocking with us. Happy holidays. Now, let's get into the episode. As you saw in the intro, Lauren and Orion are back. And I'm going to do a little different this week. I'm going to do it by couple because there wasn't a lot that happened this week. It was basically... A potluck where all the couples were together, and that's where Lauren and Orion, you know, got to confront one another fully since the divorce. And then Dr. Pia visited each couple, so I'm just going to do a couple by couple, starting with Lauren and Orion, since you just saw the clip. And um, Lauren finally got to, you know, get the weight off of her heart and off of her chest, because you could tell last episode that she was really struggling with the divorce while Orion was still cheesing and talking to his friends. So she confronted Orion in front of everyone, which I admit probably was awkward for the other couples, judging by their faces. But I'm glad that, you know, she felt seen and heard because I don't think she felt like Orion was hearing her because she had to repeat herself over and over again. It had the same conversations over and over again. Like it was Groundhog's Day with him because he would act like things were, were resolved and then bring up the same issues. So she finally, you know, got to tell him that, listen, you know, you wanted a divorce, you gave up. And really, he showed in front of everyone, you know, how he's always changing his mind and changing what he says. And she basically told him that he was a gaslighter to his face for doing those things. And she did cry a little here and got emotional, which I did not like to see. But her strength definitely shone through because she did mostly expose Orion so everyone else could see him for his works. And um, she spilled, I guess, the tea on Orion to everyone. But on the after party, she spilled even more tea on Claire, which we'll get to once we get to their section. So that was basically it for them. Next, we see Claire and Cameron in this review. Um, basically, the episode starts with Claire getting an explanation from Cameron about his father. He said on After Party that um, when he was 13, his mother divorced his father and that his father's lung had collapsed from all like the emotions and he's been bedridden since. So for him, it wasn't anything new that his dad, you know, was sick and not able to travel and stuff. So it's not like he would have an emotional reaction to it, you know? And he said that he actually did tell Claire kind of briefly and cheekily, you know, when she asked about where his parents were, he said that his dad was not well enough to get on a plane and that's it. And I guess he said, to be fair to Claire, 
she might have thought that it was like a temporary illness, like maybe he had COVID or something and he'd get over it. But when she found out that, you know, he was on his deathbed and like kind of bedridden, was in front of, you know, everyone at the housewarming party. So that's why she was thrown. But he did say he told her that he was not able, you know, to get his dad to come to the wedding because he wasn't well. And again, I feel like these two, their lines are crossed so bad. It's horrible because he's, he's a cheeky devil himself, you know, because a lot of what he says is short and quick and seems like he's not thinking it through, but he has feelings for Claire. It's very clear, but she doesn't feel them the way he, you know, communicates both verbally and physically, and then she doesn't seem like she's physically attracted to him. So he's putting up a wall. He's getting defensive so he don't catch feelings and look, you know, silly on TV. I feel like he's getting into self-protection, and she's playing with his heart in a way because she will tell him outright that she's not into it, but she definitely indirectly is like, okay, no touch me, don't do this, don't do that, and then she'll say, well, we don't touch, and he's like, all right, shall we, and she's like, I'm not ready yet, you know, so it's like a cast 22, very bad cycle, but what threw me this episode was that <laughs> when uh, Claire and Cameron get home from the potluck, they first start kind of acting like they're better than the other couples in a way because they clock all the problems with the other couples in class. Like, well, at least we don't do that. We communicate well. But then Cameron throws Claire for a loop and says, well, I'm actually inspired by Orion to be more selfish. And I was like, not you get inspired by Orion or Onion, as they call him on Twitter, because that's not the right person to take notes from. And I'm glad that, you know, Dr. Pia met with them before he took the ball that I guess he got from Orion and ran with it because I don't want him acting like Orion at all. So when Pia meets with Claire and Cameron, it's clear that they've kind of started to give up. They don't have their wedding rings on. And then they tell Dr. Pia that they've talked about it and they realize that they don't have long-term viability as a couple. And, um... He says that, you know, there's a religion barrier and whatnot, but he's really seeming like he's catching feelings for Claire and he doesn't want to get hurt. And then Dr. Pia just basically tells him to have fun. And then on after party, Cameron does admit that, you know, when he talked about the differences in like religion and not wanting to raise their child the same way, he said that that was kind of a front, it was part of the issue, but his main issue was that he was feeling rejected by Claire, and I could totally see that. Lauren on After Party spilled a lot of tea about Claire and Karen. I was so surprised. So on After Party, Lauren said that. Obviously, she and Claire are close, and she outright said that, well, Claire told her that Cameron told Claire that her butt was too big and that he didn't like her body. And then he should confirm it. He was like, yeah, you know, she said that. Claire, rather, had said on another episode after party that Cameron told her that he only likes slender girls. And then Cameron just shook his head and was like, no, that's not really what happened. Because um, Cameron says that he does like, you know, slender girls and everything. But Claire is slender and Claire's totally his type. But he said that Claire told him that he typically likes dark-skinned, well-built guys. And I was like, not Claire looking for a BBC. But then he said that he felt like she was kind of disingenuous, I guess, about her attractions because she only dated white guys. So it's looking like maybe Claire is sexually attracted to black men, but maybe it's not acceptable in her home because she only dates white men. I don't know what's going on with Claire, but again, I did feel a lot of weirdness from her end. And again, I think she's not physically attracted to Cameron, and Cameron is the one catching feelings, and he puts up a front and does these digs and is cheeky with her because he doesn't feel like she wants him, so... 
It's sad. Bottom line, Cameron is frustrated. And then by the end of the episode, he asks if he can move out to the spare bedroom since Claire wouldn't give him an answer about if she can see a future with him or not. And it is sad because I think they have potential, but they are destroying this relationship with their own hands. <sighs> so Brennan and Emily. So besides the potluck and the visit with Dr. Pia, um, this episode finds Brennan and Emily going to Pilates together and they do have a decent time. And a decent enough time that, you know, Brennan says he's going to go back. But as you can see in the, you know, this picture, Brennan is like that meme with that guy who's like totally angry all the time and unhappy and just putting on a front because he is not into this relationship. And his anger comes out randomly, you know, Emily and even Dr. Pia. So um, they, they're at the potluck and Brennan uses his little shady side to help Lauren grill Orion, which I was happy that he did. He asked the right questions. Good job, Brennan. But <clears throat> when it comes to their visit with Dr. Pia, it was awful. So Emily at first starts off by verbally pretending that the two are at least making progress, possibly because they at least moved in together into the shared apartment because at first Brennan didn't even want to do that, right? And then she was apologizing for her friends. And he was talking about he going to stand up for this marriage. That's why he had to, you know, be all rambunctious with those two girls that are her friends because he had to stand up for his marriage. And so, so he's acting like he's into marriage, but really it's all about him. And Emily is full of thinking that, you know, he's in it to win it now. And that they're on the same team. It's us against her friends and us against the world. But... Brennan does not like her in the shows. So um, when Dr. Pia, you know, is talking to Emily, you know, Emily's saying that, you know, they're making progress. She's making all these faces, you know, because she can't hide her feelings too well. And so Dr. Pia asked her, you know, what's with her faces and her body language, which clearly show her frustration and then um when dr pia tries to ask emily about her feelings brennan was trying to stop her from talking at police sir and like oh, and saying okay let's let's talk for a second hold on dr pia let me check in with her and you could tell that brennan you know was trying to coerce her into like not saying things to you know expose their relationship and all the flaws in their relationship and so Dr. Pia tells Brennan to, you know, stop trying to put a monkey wrench into therapy and just let Emily talk and let her do her job as the therapist, you know? So um, when Dr. Pia just squashed Brennan's dreams of having sad sidebars and control over this conversation, Dr. Pia then asked Brennan about his emotions directly and he could not give a direct answer. And ultimately kept saying he doesn't have any feelings for Emily. And then Dr. Pia told him that even though he says he has no feeling for Emily, she sees that he might have protective feelings for his wife since he kept butting in her conversation with Emily and, you know, was acting like he was trying to check in on her and trying to spare her feelings. So I think she's thinking that he's not in touch with his emotions, but she hasn't seen the footage, I guess, of him just really being about himself and caring about his image and more so butting in because he wants to curate an image of himself as like a good guy and stopping her from, you know, exposing him for not being a good guy by, you know, making her lift all the bags with her broken arm and roasting her friends and arguing, you know. So basically, Dr. Pia asked Brennan to enter individual therapy to help him identify his emotions since he's definitely being super mysterious and playing a role in the therapy session and in the marriage very poorly to the extent that I think to Dr. Pia, he seems like he may not be in touch with his emotions or even be able to access his true self or show up as his true self. So Dr. Pia suggests this, but then after she leaves, Brandon basically argues with Emily and he tells her that he don't 
feel good, <laughs> you know, about being told that he needs therapy because he's never gone to therapy and he never will. And Emily says that she's the one who should feel bad about everything based on how he's been acting. And that's true. But um, she says she had left the meeting with Dr. P and feeling hopeful. But honestly, it's time for Emily to just officially give up because as long as Brennan doesn't even want to change himself or seek the help to change himself, she cannot change him and things are not going to change. So lastly, when it comes to Becca and Austin, besides the potluck and Dr. Pia meeting, we see a nice scene with Becca being a good friend and a confidant. Shout out to Golden Girls. Um, to Emily, you know, so that was nice because you see that Brennan has been putting Emily through it. And Becca, she is just a positive energy, you know, since the beginning of the season, she's one of like the best girls on the show, right? But she's going through it with Brennan in different, more subtle ways than the other couples. And during the pilot, Becca herself broke down a little and was crying. <laughs> and I think she realizes when listening to the others that like none of the marriages seem like they have a good chance of making it this season. And her marriage is supposedly the best marriage, but she knows how she feels about it and how Brennan, you know, is kind of putting up walls with her. So I think she's like, oh, man, we're all screwed when she started crying. But that's neither here nor there. They get to the meeting with Dr. Pia. Dr. Pia asks about, you know, their relationship. And Becca says that, you know, she likes making out with Brennan, but... They're still having intimacy issues in the sense that Austin is holding back on having relations and just, you know, consummating the marriage. Now, Austin says he wants to go slow and it's just looking like a cop out because he got married at first sight. You know, he's not taking the path to go slow and this is his wife. And he claims all the time they have all this chemistry and all these vibes and they're doing all this heavy making out. And she's ready. Like at first, you know, she was saying she couldn't do a lot of things like swimming and stuff because of surgery. But apparently she's all healed up and ready to go and hype about sex. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to get her too hype about it because, you know, I, I want to slow down, slow my roll. And for me, I don't see a valid hold up other than he's not that into her. And you see in the preview, you know, Becca says she's starting to see that maybe they're not on the same train. And I don't think they're on the same train either, but still they're unfortunately still the best of the couples in terms of this episode so maybe they can make it if Austin you know can maybe develop some feelings of wanting to you know take it all the way with her but I think Austin is trying to spare her feelings and being a gentleman about maybe not liking her I hope I'm wrong and they get it together but it's very sad that none of these couples look like they're going to make it. Claire and Cameron, I think Cameron is falling. Claire is not. Maybe she allegedly wants some BBC. I don't know. But um, it's clear she's putting up a wall and he's getting tired of it. And it seems like he's going to meet with Orion and continue to be an Orion disciple next episode, which I'm not feeling. We will see. And obviously, Brennan... He has to work on himself, and Emily's not going to get anywhere with him. And Orion has already showed his true color, but it looks in the previews like Laura might give him another chance. I don't know if it's just as a friend or if they're going to retry the marriage. But then I think Michael's finally going to appear and get his second chance. So I don't know. seems like they need to hang it up this season, but they're going to try and struggle through. And I'll be here with you. So no matter what, just remember that you're the master of your fate, the captain of your soul, and have a happy holidays, and we'll talk more next time. Bye!